Hey folks, welcome to this very special announcement that we are we're about to uh, step through. I'm excited to have been and honored to have been asked to help sort of officiate and be the uh, the MC for this event. Um, as you guys know, this is this event or this grant is a collaboration between you know, L. Renee Blount and also uh, Peak Design, the folks over at Peak Design. They're going to come on. They're going to tell you what the genesis was or the inception or the reason why this this grant came to be kind of what the future might look like for it and kind of the challenges that they stepped over trying to sort of put this thing in action put everything together in such a short period of time it was an amazing response to this grant and they're going to tell you all about it um my name is frederick van johnson i am the host of a podcast called this week in photo, it's at thisweekinphoto.com. Longtime friend and fan of the folks over at Peak Design. So I was honored and excited to participate in this when they asked me to come on board. So let's go ahead and bring up uh, Renee and Adam. Adam is from Peak Design, and Renee is the reason that we're all here. So gonna, let's talk about this. Well, welcome, welcome, guys. Welcome, and Adam, welcome to your channel. <laughs> Thanks. Great to be here, Frederick. <laughs> it's good to have you on your channel. Well, you know, I set the stage a little bit before you guys came on stage. So let's just dive right into it. Renee, Elle, I want to start with you. So Elle, what is, give us a little bit of insight into who you are and what your background is. And we'll we'll do all this housekeeping. Folks that are watching and waiting on us to get to the announcement, we'll get all this housekeeping stuff out of the way, probably about 10 minutes or stuff or so. And then we'll just dive into the grant selection and all that stuff. So Elle, tell us, tell us a little bit about your background. Sure, so my name's Elle, it's short for my full name, which is Lanisha. Um, and as far as my background, I've been in climbing for nine years. And so I had a climbing injury um, a little after grad school. And so, um, so I started taking photos a lot more, especially after kind of, uh, it was a little bit after the Mike Brown situation. And so it's like, how can I show my joy outside and what I've been doing? And, um, Lo and behold, I kept doing it and kept trying. And uh, a major technical brand saw what I was doing. And and that's how I kind of got my start. Um, I had never had the best photo equipment. And so when it came to wanting to uh, try and do this grant, I just recognized such a need. If I'm having a hard time, I only recognize my community is going to be having a hard time um, when you haven't had the same historical access. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and tell us, you know, before we flip it over to, to Adam, tell us a little bit about the this grant itself. I mean, you know, obviously there's no way to, you know, satisfy everybody that needs gear in the world. So, you know, the this grant kind of scratches the surface a little bit. So, you know, give us a little, a little deeper insight into it. You know, I read the blog post on peakdesign.com. Um, tell us, tell us a little bit about that. I'm um, sure. So essentially, um, in June, after the after all the tragedy, um, like I had a lot of brands reach out, and Peak was one of the brands that reached out um, and was like, "How can I support you better?" And I appreciate it. Like um, we had a conversation and started having a dialogue, um, and they were like, "Saw what I've been doing. Like I've been in National Geographic this year. Um, I've had big stuff with the big technical outdoor brands." for campaigns and things like that. And so uh, so she asked me to write, because I had also been trying to do a lot of writing to illuminate what I what my experience has been. And so as part of that, when she asked, I was like, I I am the issue is it's for me, I just don't want to write about what I'm going through if there's no follow-up. So what's the yeah. follow-up? And for me, I was like, what people need is gear, the ability to tell their own stories instead of having people tell them for it. So how can we give people who have amazing eyes um, and uh, the, the proper equipment and gear to be able to tell stories effectively? Because people have been thinking that this whole time that I've been making it, but I've just been borrowing stuff and just making it work and staying super scrappy. And so I didn't have a professional grade camera until this year. And I've been in that, I've been taking photos commercially the last couple years. And so it's just really hard to acquire if you're not being paid adequately. 
and and um, there's all these other barriers if you're paying for your own trips, all the models, like all these things. And so if you're not being paid adequately because people are not finding value in your likeness, even though your work may be beautiful and in magazines sometimes, it's just hard to acquire everything. And so I know that's such a huge issue and people would come up to me and be like, oh, how'd you get this? And I was like, I just ran it. And um, I just wanted to give, uh, I know it's been a hard thing for me even, and I've been working a full-time job. So that's how I've been able to make things work. And so I just knew, um, and I quit it this year just to be able to do, to go full-time. And so I knew there's just such a need and if I didn't have my camera until this year, um, I just wanted to make it easier for other people experiencing a very similar thing. And yeah. so when Peak Design approached me, it was like, how can I use this moment to leverage it for more people? Um, and so I was like, I'll write it if we can do this grant. And so that's how nice. it came to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And Adam, you know, it, first of all, thank you for doing this. And, you know, I've been a, been a Peak Design fan for a while. I got a bunch of bags over there in the corner and some clips and all that stuff. So, you know, very familiar with the family over there. Um, uh, first of all, for the folks that may not be familiar with Peak Design and what you guys do as a company, give us, a you know, the elevator pitch about Peak Design and then maybe segue into your involvement and why Peak Design decided to, you know, take, you know, Elle's challenge and run with it. Totally. Uh, well, nice to meet you. I'm Adam. I'm the head of marketing for Peak Design. Uh, we're a company that's about 10 years old and we're based in San Francisco and we are a company that makes photography gear uh, and everyday carry gear. So bags, camera straps, backpacks. We launched a tripod last year, that sort of stuff for uh, those of you who don't already uh, know our gear. Um, we've always been a company that uh, advocates for things that we believe in, what we think is right. Um, and so we've always, we have a history of speaking up about conservation, about climate change and environmental issues, uh, and about social justice and, uh, you know, following the death of George Floyd about a day and a half later, I woke up to a FaceTime from our CEO and, um, and Annie Nybor, who was meant to be on this call. She's our head of sustainability and responsibility. And they were just like, we got to say something. Um, and so we did as a brand, we came out and, uh, and we spoke out about that and we encouraged other brands to do the same. Um, and then we were like, all right, we got to do some stuff now. And one of those things that we decided to do was to launch a series of field notes, uh, sharing the experiences of black photographers, outdoor enthusiasts, um, you know, and photography and outdoors are kind of these two industries that we straddle, uh, both of which have a history of and, you know, to this day, uh, excluding people of color and black people. Um, and so we decided to kind of launch this series of photo essays sharing the experiences of folks. And that's how we came across L. Uh, we came across Originally, I think it was your work, L, where you photoshopped the pictures of uh, of black outdoor athletes on the covers of prominent outdoor magazines, um, and we just saw that as a really creative form of activism to kind of show a predominantly white industry uh, and sort of media machine surrounding that industry what things could and should look like. Um, and so we reached out to Elle and we said, hey, let's uh, let's get together and have you write this piece. Uh, and then as Elle mentions, he said, all right, I'd like to take it a step further and uh, give some gear away to black photographers and videographers. And we're like, hell yeah, we're game. Um, so we called up a couple other brands. We called up Sony and uh, Bar Lenses and put together three grants. Um, and then after announcing them, we actually had additional companies come on board, um, Arcteryx and One Wheel and Flickr and Smug Mug. Uh, so actually now we're launching seven grants. We get to announce seven finalists today that wow. we're uh, pretty stoked about. 
That's crazy because last last time we spoke, it was six, I think, and now it's seven. That's awesome. Yeah, that is yeah. that is really cool. You know, and that's that that's, that opens the window to a, a discussion, a little bit of a discussion I want to have before we dive into the, you know, awarding of these. And, and Adam, I hope you can address this because I know that you guys, your Peak Design is a forward looking company. You're not afraid of challenges or controversy or you know getting your hands dirty and things. Uh, this is a sticky topic, right? And I know you guys got some blowback from other groups, you know, white people, indigenous people, Hispanic people, Asians, et cetera, all these other groups who were saying, hey, what about us? You know, what, what, what do you say to that, you know, when you get that? Obviously, I know the answer is like, you can only do so much. And, and you know, right now is, is, is a great time to do a grant like this, but what's the answer to those other groups that, that are, are crying foul and saying, Hey, we're here too. Yeah. I mean, I guess the, the short answer is just sort of the, the idea that by helping a specific group of people out by doing something to create equity for um, a specific population of people doesn't mean that by definition you are somehow marginalizing all other groups um mm -hmm. and you know it 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 just goes back to the whole thing why we say black lives matter not all lives matter uh you know of course all lives matter but that's not the point the point is that black people face specific challenges and when you say that phrase you are sort of identifying those specific challenges yeah. Um, no, for sure. Yeah. You know, and and again, in short, like we, you know, we do get we did get a little bit of blowback um, by by and large, like the the response was incredibly positive, uh, not just by customers, but by other brands. Like as I mentioned before, all these other brands, like as soon as we launched, we're like, hell yeah, we want to be a part of this. Yeah. Um, you know, and and at the end of the day, for the for folks that still you know disagree, it, it, it's kind of like you're you're always going to get the only way to not get criticism is to never do anything or say anything or be anything. Um, and we'd rather be a company with a backbone that um, you know loses a few customers here and there when we say something um, than sort of you know, be afraid to say something in the first place. Love it. Love yeah, it. Elle, you, want, you want to say something? Um, for sure. Um, I think, I hope that this grant, I mean, it's born out of a little bit of my experience as well. You know, I'm a black person um, trying to work in this space. And so it felt very fitting. But however, this is not meant to be an end all at all. This is meant to be a start. Like, I hope mm -hmm. this like there's no brands do not need permission to go do this, but I hope it inspires many to do this. Like now that they see that it's okay and palatable, it is meant to be a jump start. I love to see grants for indigenous people. I'd love to see grants for LGBTQ plus identifying people. I love to see grants for like um, Asian American, like there, it could just go so many ways. This is a jump start. It's not the end all. And so be POC, but like, this is the, this is supposed to be novel and the first. So there's just so there's room for everyone. And my response is that like, yes, we need it all. Like, please go, yeah. go start. And I'm just really glad that other brands hopped on. Once they saw it was okay from the three, um, from the three first ones, I knew more people would get onto this. And so um, I definitely, I have like friends at Arcteryx and the, my, the friend at One Wheel, like, I, they, they reached out cause I put like, we could use more once I knew it was like 1400 applicants and making sure and them feeling comfortable that they could do it. And so it was me trying to use a little bit of leverage to get extra money. When I realized there were too many, there were so many applicants. How can you only choose three people? Like, how can we double this? Um, and how can we keep rolling momentum? And then how can brands see that and make it seem like it's something that they now can not need permission to do, but feel even more comfort comfortable to do. And so I'm really glad um, we were, or I was able to get it doubled and that peak even added a, an additional one and yeah, more yeah. the other users came in. No, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's exciting. I know from just from my own personal experience talking with, with various brands in the industry that want to engage and do things, but it's, you know, the, 
it's a radioactive topic in a lot of ways, race and, you know, especially with everything going on in the streets, you know, it's just like, okay, as a brand, we want to be brave. We want to be engaged, but then they don't want to, you know, disenfranchise people. Like Adam, you're saying, you know, you guys are just like, okay, we may lose a few customers along the way, but we're going to stick to our principles and do what we think is right. And a lot of companies just don't do that. Some of these larger fortune 10 companies are like, you know, what, uh, you know, uh, one percentage points could be, you know, $400 million or something. So what do you, what do you say to those companies that are sitting on the fence or like, you know what, we want to touch it, but we're going to wait for that radioactiveness to die down a little bit. What would you tell them? Um, I mean, I think the, the space to, as a company, just sort of sit back and, and not say things or do things or sort of advocate for the values that, that you believe in is that space is getting smaller. Um, I think that recently, you know, this year, the, like the line of like normal and acceptable shifted and, you know, I, I don't know the, in short, like, you know, if you, you are going to get people that are going to try and light you up on Facebook and Instagram and fuck it, let it happen. You know, like, don't yeah. be afraid of that stuff. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, just just do something. Yeah, build a, build a dogma and stick with it, right? And just press forward. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, love I, you. I would add to that, like, also, there is, I think, and, and Peak Design has this too, we fear speaking up on something where we feel like we're not absolute experts and we haven't, like, deeply researched every single side and aspect and historical context of it. And, you know, while there's a certain amount, like if you want to advocate something, you should understand all the sides of it. Uh, you should be open to criticism. You should be open to counterpoints and stuff like that, but you don't have to have it all figured out uh, to sort of make a statement of support um, or kind of like speak from where your heart's at. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love it. I agree. And I just also want to say thanks to Peak for taking me up on the challenge. Like, um, uh, it's something like it meant a lot to me. Um, and especially for me, someone that's up and still, I uh, still on the rise, even though, um, people may, a lot more people may know my name, but like, I just super appreciate it. Um, a brand kind of sticking to it and sticking up and wanting to ride with me on this. Because once you have one, it's really easy to get the follow through. And for everyone else that wants something like this, there's quite a few brands who now all their marketing managers are like, oh, we should do something like this. Oh, this was a good idea, Elle. And I was like, why did it take someone that had less resources to like leverage something uh, or writing assignment to do, do this? And so there are just so many ways I, I hope that people see this and encourage to do something and know that there's probably things coming in 2021 for sure. Yeah, no, I, I feel like this is this is, you know, kind of opening, hopefully opening the floodgates. Um, Elle, I want to I want to continue with you before we dive into the 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 awarding of these grants, just to set the stage for who these grants are for, because, you know, in our in our pre meeting um, we were talking about the sort of the target being the outdoor photographers and adventure photographers. Can you kind of set the stage for who those who the people are that you guys were looking at in the spreadsheet and, and then ultimately making the decision for? Sure. Um, we do have some brands like technical and outdoors brands who are part of this. But um, we are looking at a gamut of people. Um, but it is also people who do who who are outside. Um, Part of that is because there's an additional barrier with it. Um, like a lot of these outdoor companies, you're competing with people, like a lot of white guys who live in vans who have really low cost. And a lot of us don't feel safe doing that. And so when you do stuff and go on these trips, it's really, really tough if you don't have access to equipment or the proper equipment and you can't, it's hard to work speculatively like that. And so, mm -hmm. you know, paying for your own trips and doing all this. So it was, um, very intentional that we were going to include a crop of people who um, fit in that lane, 
but also there is space, especially when we went now have it to seven winners to uh, make it a bit more inclusive, especially if people who have some different, a few different mediums, but there is an idea um, for people uh, that have a, an eye for being, being outdoors um, yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, and it leaves a room for lots of other genres as well, right? Like you were saying, other other groups and then other genres within those groups, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of lots of room to move forward. Um, so let's dive in. I know there's a there's a ton of people in the chat room that are, uh, you know, kind of sitting on pins and needles and waiting for us to or for you guys to make this announcement. I want to turn it over to you guys. Um, I'm going to let you roll with it. Adam, if you want to, do you want to share your screen at all and sort of step through things? Or do you guys just want to go verbally? What do you think? Yeah, why don't I uh, share my screen here? Okay. And uh, I guess I'll, well, I, if I share my screen, we'll give away the first winner. You're going to give it away. Yeah. <laughs> so don't do that. <laughs> let's not do that. Well, let's just start. Let's, let's dive in with, with, so there's, there's seven, seven uh, grants that you guys are giving away. Let's just start with number one. Let's just start rattling them off and then give your thoughts on why this person was selected, what the thought process was. I personally know, even after just having a short conversation with, with both of you uh, and Lawrence yesterday and Annie, that, this has been like a gut wrenching process, even just looking through the, I was sitting and watch, I was on an email thread with you guys today, just watching the pain of you guys trying to make these selections and not being envious of you. So sure. here you are. So yeah, you guys want to go ahead and start, start with number was, one and just take us through it. There were so many people who were qualified. And so if you are someone that did not win, it is not a knock on you at all. Um, like know that your work is worthy, know that you're worthy and know that I wanna keep seeing your work. Um, I think that's something I really wanna say because this was really, really tough. Even the top 100, it would be great candidates. Um, it's why we had to figure out how to double this. Um, and so please know uh, this, is, this is really tough and I'm really excited for the winners, but if you did not win, it is not a knock on you at all. Like this went on motivation, and a lot of need um, for people. And so I hope that this doing something like this is a win for the community and um, and that we can continue being able to do stuff like this. Love it, love it. All right, Adam, who's the first person in history, in the history of this grant to be the recipient of this All grant? All right, I will, uh, I'll spill the beans here. Uh... 1900 applicants. Was it 19? That was the final number, 1900? Wow. Oh, somewhere in there. <laughs> Winner number one, Jason Hines. Um, Jason it, Hines. Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jason. Uh, Elle, I guess let's, let, let's riff on Jason. Um, Jason is, I feel like I would consider him to be an outdoor, like, thrill seeker based on his essays uh, he, yeah, not just, not just like an outdoor athlete, but like a thrill seeker. Um, and you know, we picked him in part because he just has a beautiful eye for capturing s some of those moments of thrill in the outdoors. Um, there's a quote from, from one of his answers. He says, I'm a fairly private person. And expressing myself, especially with words, can be challenging at times. I want people to see what I see. I want them to know what brings me joy. I want them to know what drives me. Um, and I feel like that perfectly describes just the intent behind a lot of his, his images. Um, I think Jason is one of the people who, like, this grant is really, is, really fits in the spirit of the grant as far as not only his work, but as far as his story, um, and as far as when it really hit the need. Um, like he's still someone that's very much up and coming, but with the right tools, he's someone that could go off and do a brand job tomorrow. Like that's one of those things where like we really noticed with his eye that everything was there. We know that, we know that he's gone to photo camps and doesn't, and didn't have 
didn't and left without adding equipment. So the motivation is there. And so Jason's one of those people that I'm really excited to see where he goes and then clearly has the technical ability with climbing. Um, that's also when you're doing outdoors, you have to have the technical ability to shoot it. And so um, I, it was like, became very obvious and um, we just love his, I loved his work. Um, and he's just someone up and coming uh, who just needed those resources, more resources to shine. And I'm, I'm yeah. so excited to see it. Yeah. Yeah. I also believe he runs the Philly chapter of Brothers of Climbing. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. So Brothers of Climbing is New York based and he runs the Philadelphia chapter, which is really about getting um, uh, uh, black people uh, in, into climbing and creating community around it. Um, there's a piece on, there's an REI piece um, on the YouTube if anyone wants to Google Brothers of Climbing. Um, but like, I'm, I'm super stoked after looking at all of his work um, and, and so stoked to see what he does. Yeah. And, Congratulations. And he's currently shooting uh, 35 mil. He's shooting film right now. Um, so a Sony A7 III um, I think is like going to be a really nice piece of gear to help him next level his game there. Adam, what, what's what's all in the package? I know probably everybody in the chat knows, but just for the folks that don't, what what are these these awardees receiving? Uh, yes, so let me just bring up the uh, the list here. Um, so you're getting a Sony A7 three full frame mirrorless camera with a twenty to seventy lens, um, and then a whole pile of Peak Design gear: a carbon fiber travel tripod, two everyday bags, a tech pouch, uh, some straps, camera clip. Um, basically a full set of gear to organize and carry and store and protect your photography equipment, as well as a $250 gift card to borrow lenses, uh, where you can rent any lens, camera, lighting equipment, whatever. Uh, and then in addition, kind of a late ad was a uh, smug mug and flipper, flipper, flicker, both uh, hopped in and are offering a two year free subscription to their pro level accounts. So, um, a great way to kind of build out your portfolio there. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. And it's also, I'm so glad peak is doing this because as part of being a person of color showing up, you also want to feel confident that you fit in. And there's so many settings where feeling like you have an adequate gear, especially if you're showing up for commercial things, um, can feel intimidating. And so like having all the right stuff, um, you know, you know, if you look good, you feel good. And so I'm so excited that they're having this. Everyone gets this and gets to show up looking like they, they, they are the part because you all are. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, Jason Hines, number one, congratulations. That's a mountain of gear you're getting. And, you know, I just want to throw in before we proceed to number two, um, we talked about Peak Design, Annie, uh, Adam and I, we spoke about, we wanted to do this sort of live announcement because we thought that, you know, having L and just sort of doing this sort of group thing would be the, the best way to communicate this message. But then the next step, I think, is to have each one of these seven recipients on to the podcast and do a one-on-one -on -one interview with each one and just sort of talk through their you know their story and how what they plan on doing with this with this new mountain of gear and their work and all that good stuff so stay tuned for that as well who's next who's number two all right sharing again here we go drum roll i need drum roll, drum roll sound effects in here here we go ready david Boom. lee here we go david lee um another climber outdoor enthusiast and photographer um we picked david for a number of reasons um stylistically he really kind of brings a a fine art style to uh a lot of his outdoor shooting so we kind of liked the the way he melds those two genres together uh david recently quit his job to become a full-time photographer. So like 
recently made the plunge, went all in, which is pretty rad. Um, yeah, he's got a beautiful eye. He's really technically sharp. Um, and he's been shooting primarily film for the past two years. So again, being able to step up to full frame digital, um, we thought could be just a huge game changer for him. Yeah. And Elle, what are your thoughts on this recipient? Um, I think David is one of those people that fits the, the purpose of the grant, the grant, just being able to support someone that's really trying to, trying to go for it. Um, between David and Ja, you could tell that they're, they may have different experience levels. However, like they're so deserving. Um, and so I really love David's work, his eye, his, um, how he blends the fine art, his portraiture. And then he also has an outdoors component. And so there's just so many ways that David can go. And I'm excited to support him on his journey of taking a risk. Um, it's, it's huge. And so um, I'm, I'm just, uh, I, I was very much wowed by, by, his, by his work. And especially since so much of it was film, um, I was just incredibly wowed. Um, and so I'm just so stoked to see what, he'll, what, he, what lane he continues to straddle and how he'll use it. Um, like it's, uh, I think he's an, an incredible re recipient. Yeah, lovely. Awesome. Well, good. David Lee, congratulations. Number two. Look at that. Number two. All right. Number three. We're keeping it rolling. Number three. Wait for it. Drum roll. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. All right. Are you keeping us waiting? Ready? Is that a, uh, what is that? I thought I shared my screen. No, you scared no. something else. I don't know what that was. I was afraid to bring that up. What is that? <laughs> it's like a whiteboard. Here, wait, hold on a second. Oh, there we go. I see it now, I think. Well, this isn't going as smoothly as I thought it would. <laughs> Hey, this is, is live. It's okay. you're, you're just building up anticipation. You're building up anticipation. You know, while while Adam's doing that, El, I wanted to just have you chime in on one thing. One thing that resonated with me during our conversation yesterday was you were talking about the issue that a net 90 payment schedule, the the you know, how that impacts people that are just trying to get traction in this. You want to elaborate on that a little bit? For sure, I feel like one of the barriers, um, especially for for me, and I know a lot of other people, has been um, the pay, and so and how soon you get it, and so it's huge. Um, mm -hmm. Being able to get something within thirty or thirty or less days versus ninety days, ninety days. Like, how can someone eat, especially if you're someone that's just starting? If you're someone there's when you're a black person, there's these ugly, there may be more financial barriers because you don't have the underlying privilege. And so, like, how am I supposed to eat if I may not get paid for 90 days plus? And it's happened to me and something that I'm really like, nope, I'm not doing that campaign unless everybody gets paid in the month, a month and a half at max. And so but really trying to really push for a month and. For any other people watching this, um, um, just out of curiosity, like push for that. Like I want net thirty, um, because that's that's just one of the hugest barriers, um, especially for the brands I work with. They think it's okay or publications. Uh, yeah. So, and this like reeducation process to brands to know like you're not part of the reason you may really want talent or want these eyes. However, your process does not indicate. Or say that say that it does, and so like yeah, I, I would I would advocate for net negative fourteen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, pay me before the work gets done, like everything else, you know. Oh. Or let, let's go to the grocery store and say, you know what, I want to pay you now, but I'm going to pay you in three months from now. <laughs> so, all right, Adam, I see your screen is ready. As a uh, maybe, it's because we're a, a photographer, a company that makes photography equipment, and we're a little bit closer to the industry, but. I found that story kind of flabbergasting that so many brands were waiting that long to pay 
their photographers because I mean, a product brand does not exist without photography. Um, yeah. It's just, it's just wild. So yeah, it's a great point. Yeah. Um, okay. Right. Can you Who's see? Who's I can see it. Who's who's number three? Drum roll, Bill Anticipation. Is filmmaker Kayla LaCour. Um, Kayla, Kayla so LaCour. Filmmaker uh, grant winner that we've announced. Um, Kayla kind of specializes in cinematography and photojournalism. Um, what really drew us to her, she has a fantastic talent for cinematic storytelling. Um, it's super sharp, it's super engaging. Um, she's done some really interesting films. This is you know, part of her per portfolio here, um, a film about women, women engineers on racism in Silicon Valley, a machine that presses vinyl records, a story about uh, preserving um, fossils, um, just like all glass blowing, all sorts of stuff. And um, yeah, I, I, I think what makes Kayla really special with her work is not only is it really good, but she is a, a one woman show. Uh, she shoots, she edits, she produces. Um, and like, she just goes, she does it end to end. Um, and so she recently quit her job um, she was producing films actually for Wired magazine, and she just has this insane skill set um, and a huge drive to tell stories. And she currently owns no filmmaking equipment at all. Um, and so we're stoked to kind of help jumpstart the next step in her career. All right, Kayla. L, any any comments on Kayla? Um, no, I was super impressed. I feel like uh, you really were riveted by Kayla's story. I mean, there are just so many um, amazing stories. And so being a one woman show without a camera and seeing this person's success um, already uh, was really um, compelling. But just the story of not having the camera um, and like, how can we continue? Because it seems like her career hinges on this. And so how can we continue to support and elevate so she can keep doing um, more amazing things? Yeah, fantastic. Good. Congratulations, Kayla. Yeah. Number three. I'd love to play one of her films, but I, I feel like uh, it's, a, it's a little bit more difficult to get that across on a on a live stream. So I definitely- She's not going to do it justice. Yeah, I won't. I encourage all y'all to check out her um her portfolio. And actually, I think we should, we'll update the video description uh, with links to the portfolios of all the winners and stuff. Good. Good idea. Excellent. All right. Moving right along. Who is, uh, who is our fourth person that we're going to change their life tonight? All right. Wait for it. And I will say, um, like I see some of the comments, and I want to say need was a huge factor in how we chose people. Um, like that was one of the biggest things. This is why it made it so hard. Everyone had such compelling stories. Um, so no, we really put as much due diligence as possible, especially for me. Like I was like it was just so tough, um, and so that's why. Uh, it's not a knock on anyone. I just want everyone to keep going because this, like, I I just would love to see everyone successful and hopefully that we can do more things like this. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, uh, El, while I have you on the hot seat there, it, uh, again, we were talking about this yesterday. Another question I want to close the loop on is the revenue model um, for outdoor and adventure photographers. Like, where where does the where does the money come from? And and you know. I, can you get rich doing this or is it a, you know, just sort of a, a self-sustaining effort? Um, well, this is something that's why I've been on my own journey. Um, I started in 2018 doing like commercial um, mm -hmm. um, and like Arcteris was the first one I did an actual campaign for. And so what I've learned is like 
um, it can be tough, but you have to kind of keep at it um, and really make brands kind of see you. Um, and so it is sustainable, but it's something like I didn't even feel invited to the party until this year. Um, yeah. But it was like my trying to do own my own hustle. So what happens is like a lot of people will submit to publications. And so, but the publications, it's not where necessarily I would say the big money is. It's they'll submit and um, and it allows more brands to see your work. And so I, I absolutely think there's a way to make a living um, uh, with having like uh, brand clients. Um, yeah. It's so it's totally possible that it's a hustle um, and it's taken me a few years to really build up the relationships um, as well. Um, and so I go to like, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I was going to say, how is the current situation, you know, with with uh, with COVID-19 and lockdown and travel restrictions and all that stuff? How has that impacted just sort of getting into this this genre? For me, it's made it easier um, in some ways because I was a, doing a one woman show producing, pulling the pulling permits often anyway. And so it's made me a stronger candidate like, oh, she's been out doing it on her own because um, anyway. And so and especially I have um, I also will still do some modeling job. And so mm -hmm. the modeling I actually kind of enjoy and it always helps me learn and get some new tricks of the trade. Um, and then, uh, especially if you have start to have a good portfolio and an eye and something that's unique to you, um, brands will start to want that. Um, and so I find it easier because I have less people trying to oversee the shoot. I can just go out and shoot and they know I can do it. But it's a lot more work on me because you become the stylist, producer, the editor, um, yeah. the casting agent. Um, and for me, and that's just my work with technical brands and um, lifestyle brands like Athletic, Athleta. Yeah, yeah, it, it's interesting. It's, yeah, I mean, it, lots of changes and, and it's it's interesting that you say that one of the good things, if there is a good thing that you could say that came out of COVID is the fact that, you know, you're able to engage more and do this. So, I mean, I mean you know, it's, it's encouraging to see this whole thing sort of play out. And I wanna encourage the people that are in the chat right now to go ahead and throw your Instagram in there so that, you know, we can start building a community of the people that are in here, right? So go ahead and share your Instagrams in there and make sure everyone knows who's who and follow each other so that, you know, everybody can be connected through the interwebs. Alan, what do, or Adam, what are we uh, looking like over there? We're good to go. We're good to go. Bring it up. Let's see our fourth life that we're going to change tonight. Let's see it. All right, here we go. Drum roll. Ellie, you're a drum roll person. Come on. <laughs> here you go. Boom. Number four, Brittany Butler, uh, or as she goes by, Brittany Janae in her portfolio. Um, Brittany is a filmmaker out in LA, originally from St. Louis, um, coincidentally, my hometown as well. Um, she has uh, a really a uh, great eye for um, just powerful, honed, and like, I would say like playful and, and sometimes empathetic storytelling um, through documentary style film. Uh, a lot of her subjects are uh, in sort of Hollywood or the entertainment industry, but her, her, um, her overall port portfolio goes broader than that as well. Um, she does photography work in addition. Um, yeah, a lot of intent behind her films. She had to uh, sell her camera gear during COVID um, as a lot of folks have had to do um, in order to make ends meet. So she is currently cameraless right now. Um, so again, we thought that this was a perfect opportunity, um, you know, to kind of make a big impact uh, in the life of somebody who's super talented and super driven. Love it. All right, Brittany, congratulations. Elle, any, any other thoughts before we move on? No, um, just another like beautiful array of work. And so 
just um, stoked to be able to give this person a camera again. Um, there are a few people in the same vein, which made this really tough. Um, hearing that someone's ma major outlet, they had to give it up to make it through COVID. And so um, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm just so elated for her to be able to do what she does and to keep doing it. Love it. All right, Brittany, congratulations. And shout out to Chicago in the chat. I see you in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's next? Who's our next uh, number five before we move on? All right. I'm excited. This Yo. is fun. I wish you guys have more. We only have three left. We need more than seven. Come on. <laughs> I mean, this is novel. Getting from three to seven cameras was amazing. And so I wish, I hope we can keep doing this. <laughs> I know, right? This is good. And I mean, it may feel like we're going through these winners slowly, but like this pales in comparison to the just hours that we spent um, reviewing applications. It, I cannot express how, uh, I mean, it was it was such an inspirational process um, and, oh, just excruciating to, to have to like choose just seven. Um, but uh, here we are. Uh, oh, look, Brittany Janae is in there. Brittany says, OMG, thank you. Congratulations. Nice. You're welcome. Uh, okay, right. I'm sharing the screen. You ready for the next one? Here we go. Oh, I'm waiting on you. Drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Adrian Burrell, congratulations. Uh, Adrian is a photographer and a filmmaker. Um, he is based out in Oakland. Um, and man, where to, where to start with Adrian? Um, he's super talented. He has a amazingly, uh, broad creative skill set. Um, he's done music videos. He's done narrative films. He's done, uh, a broad range of still photography, some of which like this set here, blends you know archival work with with new stuff um he's just he's super creative um and yeah he yeah he has a, an extremely broad range um what i think is particularly incredible about adrian is his backstory he has a, a, a pretty you know incredible multi-generational family arc uh, his grandmother in 1945 was living in Louisiana and was forced to leave Louisiana by the Ku Klux Klan, um, who were enforcing Jim Crow laws. Um, she fled to Oakland. She had 16 children and 58 grandchildren. She had a huge family. Um, Adrian grew up in Oakland. Uh, he grew up with a learning disability the movie Forrest Gump. I, I think I'm getting all this right here. He, he watched the movie Forrest Gump and that movie was one that uh, as a kid with a learning disability kind of really spoke to him and stuck with him. Uh, because of that movie, he decided to join the military um, and he's a, he's a former Marine. Um, and he kind of credits that to you know, changing the trajectory of his life from one where he may have ended up, uh, you know, being involved in, you know, uh, violence on the streets of Oakland. Um, and yeah, because of that kind of experience spanning generations, this is what ultimately influenced him to get into filmmaking. Um, and yeah, and he's just produced some really incredible work because of it. Um, he used to have a, a, a Sony A7, but it broke, uh, and he can't afford another camera right now. And uh, we think that uh, this is a perfect opportunity to match somebody with amazing drive uh, and, and, a, and a really amazing skill set uh, with some amazing gear. There you go. All right, Adrian, congratulations. 
Yeah. Oh, any, anything you want to add on there? I mean, Adams, um, uh, he's, I mean, it, it's all been said. Um, yeah. Just incredibly um, uh, humbled to give someone like this um, a camera and a, again. And so um, Adrian's work speaks for itself. It's, it's beautiful. And so I'm so excited to um, continually help elevate others. Um, and see others hopefully pay it forward in the future. I can't wait to see everyone's continued success. Yeah, yeah, this is this is amazing. I have a feeling this event uh, and, and and sort of Peak Design leaning into it and the follow on from the other brands is definitely gonna, you know, kind of open up the floodgates a little bit. And I think I think we'll see a lot more of this hopefully going on for creators in all genres, not just photography. It'd be great to see it all over. So, all right. We got. We have two more. Adam, number six and number seven. Who's our? Who's the sixth life we're going to touch tonight? All right, here we go. Drum roll, please. Drum roll. Boom. Mike Brown. Another oh, outdoor Brown. photographer. Um, oh, why don't you take the? Uh, why don't you take the mic on this one? I feel like I've been quite talkative. Um. Like, I mean, Mike's work is beautiful. I mean, just to see there's not a ton of uh, black landscape photographers and he's maxed out the equipment that he's had to the most. Like I haven't seen someone, this is like one of the, the like a brilliant job of doing the most with what you have and making it beautiful. And like, it's just so, it just speaks for itself. Um, I'm so excited to see where this person goes, especially as a landscape photographer, like 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 you could see him being placed in magazines tomorrow, um, or Nat Geo Adventure tomorrow. Like it's 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 beautiful. So I'm so excited, and I also know this is another person that went full tilt, like um, really has gone into it with with everything, like so many other people in this competition have. Um, but like the work was, it was one of the standouts. Um, uh, it's, it's just, it's, it was really amazing to see based on the equipment that he was using. Yeah. Adam, you have, a, have anything to add to that? Um, yeah, I, I like uh, Mike's sort of relationship with the outdoors, I think is mm -hmm. a, uh, a profound one and, um, you know, definitely a big part of his motivation. Um, he's been an artist. He says he's been an artist for 15 years, um, but really just the last three year period of his life, uh, he has sort of immersed himself in the outdoors, quit his job. Um, and, you know, as you can see here, has been van lifing um, for that time period. Um, and And so it's just, it's rad to see somebody's kind of muses uh, flow through so dramatically in their work like this. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, he's a definitely have a he definitely has a definite distinctive style and color palette. Yes, the compositions are quite amazing. Um, I'm so excited to uh, con to continue to watch like. This conference, this um, grant put so many people on everyone's radar. And so um, like even beyond the seven, like, cause it was so hard. And so like, it was just amazing to see him and, and just so many other, so many others. Yeah. And unfortunately we are at the last one, the last, the last recipient of uh this round at least you know like we were saying before this hopefully will be the first of many across several genres creative and otherwise but uh unfortunately all things good things must come to an end for this particular grant and that's with number seven so adam's going to bring that one up now and we'll look at that one here we go here we go congratulations justin sisson um, so as I'd mentioned before, last night we were, uh, trying to whittle down a list, you know, from a hundred to 10 to six. 
And we just got to a point where we felt like we couldn't make any more cuts. We like couldn't conscionably do it. And so we sort of decided to last minute scrape together and buy a seventh grant uh, for Justin. Um, Justin's work, uh, he's got a, yeah, he, he, he's got a, a really beautiful fine art eye. Um, a lot of his work is very kind of minimalist. Um, and that, you know, that artistic style kind of stood out. It's very thoughtful in his composition, uh, a, a less is more kind of guy. Um, he, one thing that we really liked about his photography is that it, it sort of bridges this gap between fine art and, and like commercial work. You know, as you can see, a lot of the, he's got pictures of, you know, scotches here next to these beautiful portraits and, and it just all flows together. You know, one doesn't look like it was done for a brand and versus one being done for a gallery. And, and so we just thought that his style really lends himself to having a really successful career, both in fine art and, and in commercial work. Um, he also is just shooting on a 35 millimeter camera right now. He was forced to sell his Fuji digital system to pay bills during the pandemic. Um, that was something that we saw over and over again in, in applications. Um, you know, and he, he, he's also faced a lot of setbacks in his life. Um, he grew up in a low income neighborhood. He grew up without a father. He grew up around drugs and violence. He dropped out of high school at the age of 17. Um, and I guess he just has a really beautiful outlook on life because of that. I wanted to read something from his essay here. He says, I want young boys and girls to know they don't have to be a product of their circumstances. I need them to know anything is possible, no matter where you're from, and that hope is the key. Hope can take you anywhere you want to go. Um, and I mean, if that's not something that you want to print out and put on your wall right next to your bed when you wake up, like, I don't know what is. So yeah. congratulations, Justin. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Elle, anything to add there? I mean, um, we were just so impressed. Uh, like the work, it, it's like a, it's amazing. Um, and the story, um, it was everything about this candidate. Um, was just so so impressed and humbled to to help um, help this person. Um, and so uh, I'm like, I was blown away. I mean, there were literally a hundred people at least. I was blown away by. Um, there were so, so many, like whittling it down from 1900 to seven was very yeah. tough. And, um, but Justin, like his product lens, it was like, it was just, and how well it was done. It was just beautiful. Um, and then like just the story. And so I just hope the, ever, anybody else who's watching this, especially people who have brand connections or anything else, like, don't be afraid to leverage things to ask like and create continue to create more grants for even if it's like for your city or for your medium like i just hope this inspires people to believe that you have leverage to go create something um and, and to be able to do it like i didn't know this would come come would come of it and um and like yeah everyone was so amazing and i appreciate everyone who who applied um it was, it was so tough. It was really, really quite tough. I love it. I love it. Well, any, um, as we wrap this up, um, Adam, any, any final thoughts you want to throw out there, uh, about this particular program or peak design or anything? I mean, I guess I just wanted to say that, um, we will do this again. Um, you know, I'll mentioned before, like, this is not, this is far from the end all be all. Um, for us, this is this is a beginning. You know, L challenged us to do these grants, and we said hell yeah. And we didn't really know how you know what the uptake would be, and it certainly 
went far beyond any of our expectations. And so, um, you know, now next time we do this, we've got the dozens of brands that, that reached out and wanted to be a part of this, that we can rope in. Um, and, you know, I think we're going to be able to put a lot more resources to it, a lot more thought behind it. And, uh, you know, so the next grants are going to be bigger and better. I don't know exactly when they're going to be, but they're coming. Yeah. Keep going. yeah. They're coming. Oh, any, any final thoughts there? No, um, I was wondering, uh, I think on the, on the call yesterday, Adam, you mentioned something about what anyone who applied to the grant may, may get. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, so an email is going to go out tomorrow to everybody who submitted an application with these grants. And that email is going to have three things in it. It'll have a 40% off coupon to Peak Design. So 40% off of a Peak Design purchase. Um, it will have, and that's, I think, good till the end of this year. Um, it'll have a link to apply for a 10% discount to any Sony alpha camera body or lens. Um, and you know, 10% of a, uh, camera that costs a couple grand is a nice chunk to, uh, to take off there. And then it'll also, um, contain a link to apply to a year of Flickr pro. Uh, Flickr Pro is currently offering uh, free year-long subscriptions to anybody who is documenting the Black Lives Matter movement and posting those pictures to Flickr Pro. So we'll put the information on how to get a hold of that in that email as well. So in the end, there is a little something for everybody coming. That's great. That's great. Thanks for doing that. And once again, congratulations to Jason Hines, David Lee, uh, Kayla LaCour, Brittany Butler, Adrian Burrell, Mike Brown, and Justin Sisson. That's the, the first grant recipients of this very first Peak Design uh, grant. This is, this, is, this is exciting. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with next. And um, I think that's it. I think we'll leave it there. We're right at the top of the hour. We, we managed to get all of that in in 60 minutes somehow. There's one oh, more no. thing that I, I, I just wanted to add at the end. Um, and oh, yeah, go for it. For, uh, you know, brands that are listening, whether you're in the outdoor space or, you know, whatever. Uh, and that's hire black photographers. Um, you know, these, these grants are designed to, um, you know, level up people with gear um, to help them, you know, kickstart their careers. But, you know, the they're also to kind of bring awareness to the fact that, um, you know, photography uh, and especially in certain subgenres like the outdoors, like climbing, mountaineering, snow sports and stuff, um, those those areas are underrepresented by black creators. Um, and the way to change that is not just to give out gear grants, it's, it's to hire black creators. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Um, and I'm just honored um, that so many people applied, that so many of y'all got the word out. Um, and I wanna thank everyone um, and thanks for Pete for following through with this idea that I've had for a while. And I was glad that um, to partner with someone to really do it and to carry it out. So. Thank you. I feel like melanin is magic. And I so agree with hiring more. I'm hiring brands because there's too many people telling our stories. It's different if I asked you to tell my story versus um, people assuming that they should. And so uh, there's just so many stories to be told. And um, I, I just can't wait to see more people win and more people get opportunities. There's just so much room to change, change how, to change the status quo. Um, yeah. So congratulations to everyone. And again, thank you to Peak. And um, thank you to, is it Frederick? Uh, yeah. For for moderating and jumping on this. And um, I, I super appreciate everyone. You're welcome. And if people, if people want to follow you, where, where should they go to, to connect and check out your stuff? Oh, yes. I'm Urban Climber on um, Urban Climb 
R on Instagram. You'll see me. I'm on the cover of Outside Magazine. Um, yes. uh, I'm, I feel like I'm the first black person they had in a couple of years, which is terrible. Um, but hopefully we're changing more things. Um, and so you'll see me. Um, if you DM me, I try my best to respond. Um, but I like, uh, yeah, I'm Urban Climber and I try to make things accessible for people. If you have questions, shoot me an email, send me a DM and I'll try my best. Um, and so, yeah, don't shy away. Um, I hope to do more things like this for, uh, for the community. And we may twist your arm into starting a podcast too, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so that may be coming soon. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for participating in this and, and hanging out in the chat. It was a great conversation going on in there. This is, this is just a great night overall. And Adam, thank you for everything. Elle, thank you for everything. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys here again at some point in the near future. And we'll do this all over again. Totally. Amazing. Okay. Have a good night. All right. Bye, everybody.